Hello and welcome. We've just opened the webinar for people to join. And so I would like to wait just a minute so people have a chance to get in and hear the presentation. So we'll begin the online presentation in just a moment. If you have just joined us, welcome. And I'm gonna go through some introductory information while we enable some, allow some other people to get in and join us as we start this webinar. So today's presentation is on the upcoming construction of the BST program and what you can expect before, during, and after construction. So we're going to start with the presentation and we'll finish with some time to answer your questions. And we are recording this presentation and it will be posted on the website within the next week. I will continue on as people are still joining us. Uh, my name is Tricia Yonke and I'm the city engineer for the city of Shoreline. And I'm gonna kick off the presentation, but as we get started, we wanna cover a few tips on how to participate uh, in this presentation. You're all muted which we've done to reduce background noise and to improve everyone's experience. Uh, to hear the presentation, you can adjust your volume by clicking on the microphone on the bottom left. To use closed caption, you can click on the live transcript closed caption button on the toolbar on the bottom of your screen and select show subtitles. Uh, to ask questions as part of our Q&A today, uh, click on the Q&A window in the Zoom toolbar at the bottom of your screen and submit your questions at any time during the presentation and we'll answer as many as we can towards the end of the meeting. It's helpful if you use complete sentences so your question can be understood and clearly, clearly understood when read aloud. Uh, and again, the, online, the recording of the online presentation and the question and answer session will be posted on the project webpage sometime next week. So with that next slide, thank you. As I get started, I'm gonna introduce the team we have available today. As I already said, I'm Trisha Yonke, the city engineer. And in addition to kicking off this presentation, I will facilitate the question and answer portion. Doing the presentation today, we have Bob Earl, the engineering manager, and Kristen Terpsta, the project program manager. And behind the scenes supporting the webinar, we have Erica, Sarah, and Katie. If you have technical issues, please address them in the Q&A area and they will do their best to troubleshoot. So next slide and we'll get started. So here you can see an overview of our presentation. And as already mentioned, we'll wrap it up with, with and leave approximately 20 minutes for questions and answers. And the purpose of this meeting really is to share what you can expect as the project comes to your neighborhood and your street. And I recognize there's been a lot of concerns on the city's decision to utilize the BST or chip seal treatment. And I wanna acknowledge that we and the council have read the letters and the emails that have been submitted regarding the city's use of BST. However, at this point, the decision's been made and the project is moving forward. So the purpose of this meeting is not to debate or discuss this decision. We'll be focusing on the construction process and what you can expect before, during, and after construction. We want you to understand what to expect as the project comes to your street. And we want you to know who to contact if you have issues during construction. And just a reminder, if you have questions, you can enter them in the Q&A box uh, as we go along in the presentation and we will answer them at the end. And with that, I'm gonna hand this over to Bob Earl to provide some information on what BST is. Thanks, Tricia. And again, everyone, welcome to our webinar. Well, bituminous surface treatment, some call, some call it uh, chip seal, is a pavement preservation method used by many cities and counties in Washington. 
Um, typical asphalt paving, like you have on your street today, without maintenance or preservation has a life uh, in service of about 20 years. A single BST treatment can add up to 10 years of additional service life when applied before the pavement reaches a seriously deteriorated state. I wanna emphasize that BST itself is not a pavement structure upgrade, although it does benefit the pavement structure by sealing it against water intrusion from the pavement surface. As you can see in the cross section uh, view on this slide, BST is applied to the surface of the existing street. And there are three layers of materials. There's hot asphalt emulsion on the bottom there. Um, crushed rock chips, in our case, uh, this year, no larger than one quarter inch in size. And uh, fog seal, which comes along after the uh, rock goes down and is rolled in. So BST protects the pavement surface from water intrusion, which damages the pavement structure, and from the sun, which oxidizes the crushed rock aggregate and causes um, a mechanism called stripping in which the asphalt cement is eroded from the surface of the pavement and releases the aggregate that it holds together like glue. Um, keeping the pavement surface in good condition helps eliminate puddles and raveling, both of which stem from water and sun damage. And BST is cost effective as well. It's about 20% of the cost of a typical asphalt grind and overlay. Yeah, next slide, please. In general, you should expect um, construction to start in mid to late July, uh, possibly just a few days from now. We're completing contracting. Uh, formalities with the contractor and they plan to go to work just as soon as that is done. The contractor, Doolittle Construction, will begin work on the most northerly streets that you can see in the map here, right up by 205th, down along 20th Avenue and so on. And we'll do groups of streets, um, like three or four streets at a time, and then work their way south through the streets around Caillou Caillou and Saltwater Parks, and then on down to Ennis Arden. The whole project end to end will take around 20 to 30 calendar days to complete. This means that all works in the street will be done by that time, um, except for any additional sweeping or cleanup that might be finished in the latter part of August. It's important to remember that BST, like any paving work, is weather dependent. If we encounter wet weather during the project, all operations except sweeping will be paused until warm, dry weather returns, and then we'll just go back to work. Finally, it's also important to understand that only the BST itself, the asphalt emulsion, rock chip, and the rolling will be done continuously on any given street. And several others nearby, as I mentioned earlier, typically all of this takes just one day or two. Um, all other work will be intermittent. It's either prep or cleanup and may pause from one day to seven days in between operations. So for example, if the FWBST is placed and rolled in on your street, the contractor will move on to other streets and then he'll return to your street in four days to a week, roughly, to apply the final fog seal layer. We like to give the uh, asphalt emulsion and the rock time to um, settle in and embed. And we're trying to um, generate just a single layer of rock chip across the street. So then they go, oh, heaven's speed. Okay, I have overrun my slide. Kristen, you want to take the next slide? I apologize. About one week before construction starts, you'll begin to see the contractors and the city's workers in the area. They will be removing certain kinds of pavement markings, doing some final minor pavement repairs, etc. Beginning one to two days before BST construction starts, the contractor will place no parking signs on the street that will be treated next, generally stating the dates that no parking will be in effect. Please remove your cars from the street parking into your driveway or onto a street that will not be worked on on the same day as your street. This is for protection of your vehicles and to make room so that the whole street surface can be treated uniformly. You will be alerted by on-site personnel and the removal of signs when it is okay to park on your street again. During this time, you may also see some construction equipment being staged in the area and you will probably see intensive street sweeping activity as the contractor prepares the pavement surface for BST. Next slide. The graphic on this slide represents the BST construction train in the order of use during work on a typical street. First comes the asphalt emulsion sprayer, followed very closely by the chip spreader and the dump trucks that supply rock chip, chip aggregate. And finally, the rubber tire rollers that roll the rock into the still hot asphalt emulsion, creating the new surface. This is followed by vacuum sweeping to remove loose and unbound aggregate chips. Next slide. 
Taking a closer look into each of these steps, step one is the asphalt emulsion. It is the glue in this process. Spreading a thin layer over the entire roadway surface seals any surface imperfections and also binds new rock to the roadway. Next slide. Immediately after the asphalt emulsion is sprayed on the street, the chip spreader follows and leaves a very uniform layer of rock chips on it. The rock chips provide a traction surface, protects and cushions the original street surface from wear. We chose a rock, smaller rock chip size to provide a smoother and more uniform final surface, which is similar to a new asphalt. Next slide. After the, the rock chips are placed, two to three rubber tire rollers will roll them in firmly into the hot asphalt emulsion to bond the aggregate to the surface. Rolling will continue until a single uniform layer of chips is achieved. The street will be drivable in about an hour after rolling is finished. You can also drive in the dry, untreated lane while it is open. Please drive slowly, always follow directions given by the flaggers, and do not break suddenly on the new layer of asphalt and chip. Now I'll hand it back to Bob. Thanks, Kristen. So during construction on your street, uh, about an hour or maybe a little more after the contractor um, is done with um, rolling, you'll begin to see the uh, the next stage, which is just as it says on the side, sweep, sweep, sweep. The idea here is to collect up all the loose rock chip aggregate, uh, stockpile that and remove it from the site. And um, chips that have not fully adhered to, here, adhered to the emulsion um, will be collected from gutters and driveway aprons and so on uh, by the contractors. So sweeping will continue until no additional rock chips can be dislodged from the surface. Next slide. Thank you. About four to seven days after the DSD is placed, the contractor will come back, place no parking signs, and notify you that the fog seal will be applied to the road, uh, road surface, and no parking signs and all that will travel right along with the fog sealing apparatus, which is um, a pretty rapid process. So I wouldn't expect to take fog seal placement um, on a given street longer than a couple of hours. But the contractor, um, Foxy, and then that's just diluted asphalt cement, so diluted with water. And it's like while it's still warm, so you want to stay off of that, you know, like take your shoes and so on. Um, and it cures and cools in about two, four hours. Um, Foxy will feel the, the, the aggregate chip. It's where it's going to the chips from shedding out of the new surface. Next slide. Kristen, you're on. Now, which after the Fox seal is applied, crews will return and replace pavement markings. They will also start the follow up sweeping. The will return periodically to sweep and vacuum any loose rocks. We have added about 80 to 100 extra hours of sweeping to this program. This will greatly reduce the amount of loose rock after the project. The sweepers will continue to return beyond the project until the city is satisfied that the DST is done shedding. After the fog seal has had time to cure and harden, the street's driving and walking qualities will be similar to regular asphalt surfaces. The street surface will initially be rougher than before the DST was applied. However, within a few months of average traffic, the surface stops shedding and begins to smooth out, and typically within a year, especially after a season of colder, wetter weather, the, surf, the road surface texture should be much smoother than it was just after VST application. Bob? Thank you, Kristen. Um, so this next slide has some information for you that um, will be available on the website as well. But uh, before and after construction, um, if you have questions, concerns, um, you can't find information on the website, anything like that, Kristen Terpstra or myself, our information is right there. Um, again, this will be repeated on the website. During construction, Mark Fry, one of our engineering inspectors, and Mike Elmer, who is engineer one in my group, will be out on the site with the contractor. Um, not full time, but pretty close to that. And so as they change streets and so on and get set up, they'll be out there checking traffic control and making sure that everybody is notified to stay back off the street or remove a car that somebody forgot to park in their driveway. And you can contact them at those cell numbers. I'm sorry, those are not cell numbers, those are office numbers. I'll get back to you within an hour or so. And then finally, if you get a rock chip in your car, in your windshield, um, you know, if any damage occurs that you believe the contractor is responsible for, we ask that you make uh, damage claims directly to the contractor and their phone number and their email is uh, right here on the same slide. And again, that will be made available to you um, through the website later on. So um, if Doolittle doesn't respond to your request or for a claim or to your 
inquiry, uh, please call or email Kristen or me. And if they still do not respond, you can present a claim directly to the city. To do that, please contact, contact the city clerk's office. Um, we'll provide that uh, telephone information, but it is 206-801-2230 or just CLK, which means clerk at shorelinewide.gov. The contact information in this presentation, again, will be available after today at the project information page on the city's website. So we've taken about 15, 16 minutes to do this. Let's go to questions and answers now. Trish? Thank you, Bob and Kristen. Uh, we have had a few questions answered into the Q&A. Uh, you can uh, submit those questions at any time uh, in the Q&A window in the, in the Zoom toolbar at the bottom of your screen. So some of these I will uh, condense the question and then I will ask e either myself or Kristen or Bob will answer. So the first question has to do with the smoothness of the road and concern that kids will fall on it and be injured or that elderly neighbors won't be able to push their walker. Uh, Bob, could you answer the question or uh, provide some more information on the smoothness of the road and of people's ability to, to use this for activities other than driving? Sure, I can do that. Well, right after chip sealing, the road will clearly be a little rougher than it is today. Um, I think there are some perceptions floating around out in the world that it's really rough like a gravel road. Um, it is not. It's closer to brand new asphalt but not as smooth as that. So um, people can push their walkers on it. Um, it's going to be, it's going to present a little more of a challenge than um, a brand new asphalt street would present, but it's uh, certainly not impossible. And uh, I have, in fact, where I live, I have BST on my street. And there are a lot of retired people. Um, I see them walking on my street and, and in a couple of cases, um, pushing um, walkers. And there's a lot of people uh, that live uh, just outside my immediate neighborhood who come down here to walk on this long straight street, um, pushing their baby carriages and so on. So it doesn't seem to present a big challenge to the general public or to older people. Um, answering the question about uh, kids will be injured, I think the uh, knee skinning potential of the surface is higher than brand new asphalt or brand new concrete. But definitely if, uh, if a child falls on her, his or her knee, um, you're going to come up with an, you know, a, a skinned knee that's going to need treatment. But again, I, my opinion is that um, that's not much different from a brand new asphalt street. Great. Thank you, Bob. I think, think, think the key thing there is, while it is rougher, we, it is still usable for all the uses we currently have out on our streets. Um, so the next question, Bob, this is also going to be for you. Mm -hmm. What happens if the rocks don't properly adhere on the street or it gets sticky like the previous project that happened in 2019? Well, let's take the 2019 project first. Um, we don't often experiment with new material um, systems and new processes. We test them somewhere first. And we generally do a lot of research, a lot of background checking, and see how the, the, the new material system um, has worked out for other jurisdictions whether in Washington or in California, Oregon, Idaho. But um, this time we decided to go ahead and try out a new, a new system that uses an asphalt-coated um, asphalt chip. So these chips have already been through a process offsite where they're coated with asphalt. And then a very different asphalt emulsion um, is placed on the street. And the idea is that the chips will adhere much more readily to this very hot, and this much hotter than the asphalt emulsion we use, uh, typically, um, that they would adhere better and stay put and have less shedding. And what we found out in 2019, unfortunately, is that if every single temperature condition that uh, is needed for this process and this material is right on the button, if it's exactly as specified, then you actually do that, you get better adherence, but it's almost in laboratory conditions. So in places where we have a lot of shade, and we do have a lot of trees, and there are parts and portions of streets and, and Hillwood and down in Happy Valley where the main part of the street was all in the sun and we have a, a shady corner. And we found that in those areas, the, uh, the uh, chip stripped off almost completely over the first winter because it's, the process is so 
temperature temperatures. If we're off three or four degrees in the direction, too hot or too cold, then we get this stripping effect and we have to go back and redo it. Now you can track on that last summer in 2020, um, we called Doolittle back to the site and the areas were stripped off and recoated with spray seal, which is a different, a little bit different, but it's meant to coat over you know, like a thick clog seal or a cape seal at some point, um, over the top of the existing material in those areas that occurred or where the surface was really, really bad. So we took care of that. Um, we will not be using that particular very temperature sensitive uh, methodology again. And then part of the question there, Chris, besides twin, what, what, happens if, what happens if it gets sticky? Well, um, this, this will not get sticky unless we have our um, first out of summer. Um, but it's all over Puget Sound in the presence of 57 degree heat. Um, concrete slabs on I 5, concrete slabs on Lake City Way, Bothell Way. And the problem is, is that the heat is going to affect everything that's directly exposed to the sun. So I would suppose in an extreme condition like that, you might use this, but otherwise, no, it should be dry to the touch and um, shedding of rock should end within uh, just a couple months. So and we, again, we've, we've set this particular contract up so that we can call sweepers back at any time and address any, any extra shedding that's going on. And so then I think if people are seeing additional um, tip or they're concerned about the stickiness in answer to the question of uh, who you call, like we don't anticipate that being a problem, they would reach out then to Kristen when they have an issue and Kristen would work with the contractor to resolve the issue. Is that correct? That's correct. And we will, you know, we're committed. We've worked with in 2019, we've worked with Doolittle. Uh, we've worked with Doolittle since the city began doing uh, BST and chip seal. So we have a good working relationship and they are committed to uh, making this product right when it does have uh, any anomalies. Uh, so, which brings us to um, my next question is, what happens when the roads don't have many cars traveling on them? How long will it take to adhere? Well, first of all, it adheres on the day that it's constructed. So that the idea of rolling the chip into the default emulsion is to just completely beat that effect. So once the emulsion chip and the seal has gone down, we're done. It should be completely adhered at that point, unless we have you know encounter some kind of a technical problem that we um, didn't anticipate in our experiences that this doesn't happen very often, frankly. That's why we were so surprised in 2019 when we experimented it didn't work out. So um, if you have a lower traffic count like residential streets tend to have, then that is going to take a little longer for um, shedding to end and for the street to smooth down. But uh, like if you're along 20th, especially between Richmond Beach Drive and Saltwater Park, that gets quite a lot of traffic that should shed down very quickly and smooth out. And um, the other streets in that same area, if they see a fair amount of traffic uh, over the year, and especially over the winter, then uh, smoothness will begin to be apparent and uh, uh, chip shedding will pretty much end, especially in the fall, get into September, October when the rain flies. Um, it'll be much less of an issue. And so um, if, if it's not adhering at the time of construction, what we do is go right back and we scoop that up and redo that area. So it's not to say that nothing will go wrong because we all know that's true. But at times, you know, when we do have a problem, we do redo the area right as quickly as we can after so that we have the same wear patterns and the same age of the chip. I answer the question. I think I answered the question. I did want to uh, add on to what you just said back as quick as possible. It is worth noting that this treatment using BST is temperature sensitive. So we can't go in and do repairs in uh, December, January. It needs to be dry, it needs to be warm in order to get the cure time. So. Uh, if we do have problems, it would take a while, but maybe more, depending on what the problem is, to come back and we do anything. That said, we don't anticipate. The city has been doing chip seal for over 10 years, and we have had uh, with very limited needs to come back and do uh, So my next question is, what are the work hours of my home will be finished, and I need to, will I need to reset around the payment? And what happens with Kristen, do you want to answer that? Or right, I can take that one. Um, Bob, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that some hours are 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, um, so there'll be, there'll be daytime, uh, work hours. Um, as for coordinating with your painting, um, we can always put your contractor in, in contact or uh, to get a better idea of what it will be, um, so that they can coordinate when they're working. Um, if they're able to be totally off the road with their, with their trucks, they should be okay to continue working on your house. 
Um, it would just be the access of in and out or parking on the street that may be affected. Um, the, as for garbage collection, the contractor, I mean, the Doolittle has the maps of when garbage is being collected and that will be coordinated as well. Great, thank you. And then if I can add in just one thing, um, if in worrying um, having your house painted, uh, if in that you're worried about the clouds of dust from this operation, um, don't worry about that. Uh, not a dusty um, operation at all. The rock has uh, been crushed and washed. And when it comes in on the dump, tr dump truck, uh, there are big clouds of dust as it's applied. It goes right into the asphalt emulsion and immediately gets rolled down. And it's, as you can see in some of the photos there, it's a pretty thin layer. Thanks. So we are, um, I do have just a couple questions left, both around uh, Doolittle. Uh, so if you have additional questions, please enter those now. Otherwise I anticipate we'll be wrapping up in the next few minutes. So uh, again, a couple of questions around about Doolittle. Um, are there other roads that we can observe where Doolittle has, um, has placed VST so they can take a look at them? And I would say the answer to this is Doolittle is the contractor we have used historically. There are only a couple of contractors uh, in the region that do this sort of work, although some agencies do self-perform this work. Um, I guess Bob or Kristen, is our website, does our website have uh, our previous BST routes that somebody could see the routes and see the, the previous work? Well, at present it does, but our... Um... Our notion to redo the website or the webpage after this webinar would mean that we'd take that down. We'll find a way to make that information accessible. But generally, anywhere in, um, um, over, I'd suggest anywhere in Ridgecrest on a, on a residential street, you can see what um, BST looks like now, maybe three or four years after application. Um, I, uh, I'm trying to think whether there are parts of um, Echo Lake and... Yeah, we've, we've used BSE throughout the city, but it hasn't been on every street in every yeah. neighborhood, right? We've, we've selected the streets based upon the pavement condition. Um, so I would say, let's, let's talk about uh, after this, how we can put up a, a map of our previous BST routes if somebody wants to go take a look. Yeah, a map or a list. Yeah, happy to do that. And then the other one is if we, it, why are we using Doolittle again? Shouldn't they have known the issues with the 2019 project? Uh, and as I just mentioned, Doolittle is uh, one of primary contractors in this area. Um, they did express concerns about this alternative method of using the pre-corroded chip. Uh, we technically decided it was worth, the, uh, worth a try and it did not get the results that we desired. So we do have confidence in Doolittle's ability to do this work. Um, and we use a low bid process. They are the low bidder and therefore we do uh, continue to use them because they continue to win the work. And um, that is the end of the questions. I have uh, a couple of comments I do have from one of our inspectors for those of you that will be using these is to be careful when you're turning in and out of your driveways. Uh, keep your car moving when you're turning your wheel to prevent some of that digging in and uh, pitting of the roadway, particularly when it's new. A couple of tips uh, that we have there. Um, and with that, uh, so I don't see more questions coming in. If you could go to the last slide. Uh, so that's the end of our presentation and the Q&A. Uh, we appreciate you attending. Uh, attending today and hopefully you've found this to be helpful and informative uh, as the project moves into construction. Uh, as a reminder, this record, this is being recorded and be online uh, next week. Uh, you can see here we have the website that you can go to to find this uh, presentation along with an updated uh, frequently asked questions uh, based somewhat on the questions that we received today and previous common questions we received on BST projects. So feel free if you have friends or neighbors that weren't able to join us today, let them know that it will be available for their viewing. Um, and the webpage will also include the contact, contacts and the people to contact um, that we shared earlier on in the presentation. And with that, I thank you for your time. And uh, 
If you have any questions, you know who to contact and we hope this goes smoothly. Thank you and goodbye.